What's up, everybody? Happy Saturday. I hope your weekend is kicking off well. If you're starting it with the Packaday podcast here on YouTube, then I'm sure it is. If you're not familiar, my name is Andy Herman. I am a writer and editor for Packer Reports. You can also follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. I'm also the owner of the Packaday podcast, which we have 365 days a year wherever you get your favorite podcasts, as well as, of course, right here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to both if you have not already, and I will be forever in your debt. But let's jump right into today topic, and that is going to be the big news from Friday, which was expected news, but is big news nonetheless, and that is that the Packers released both Christian Kirksey and Rick Wagner. Let's start with Kirksey, because I think this one was a little bit more obvious. It was just really tough to, to find a pathway to bringing Christian Kirksey back with where Green Bay needed to go from a salary cap standpoint. There just you know isn't a ton of options for ways that you can clear salary cap space, and Christian Kirksey was one of the ones that was a very easy way to do so. Rick Wagner was a bit more interesting. For those of you who listened into yesterday's episode, you know I discussed the offensive line in length, and uh, the discussion about Rick Wagner is certainly much more interesting, or was much more interesting, because of the injury to David Bakhtiari. But if you go back and you look at these two contracts, and even Devin Funches, which got thrown a little bit out of whack due to him op- opting out for the season, but those three were always mercenary contracts, right? Christian Kirksey was brought in as a one-year mercenary to fill in uh, for Blake Martinez while they hopefully developed linebackers and went out and drafted Kamal Martin, brought in Chris Barnes, and now those two are really going to be tasked with taking on that position moving forward. Same thing with uh, Rick Wagner, basically a uh, mercenary for Brian Bulaga, who they lost. They didn't have the money to pay to pay Bulaga, uh, you know, prime dollar in free agency. So they get somebody at half the cost. And really, you know, Rick Wagner, especially with, you know, Brian Bulaga's injuries this past season, I think you can argue that Green Bay certainly got more bang for their buck out of Rick Wagner than the Chargers did out of Brian Bulaga this past season. So, you know, interesting moves when you look at it in hindsight. And let, let's break it down a little bit further. Again, I think both were expected. When Rick Wagner signed, he signed a two-year, $11 million deal. Um, but with his release, um, obviously they paid a portion last year and now they have some dead cap this year. It, it equates to what is now a one-year $6.75 million deal. Again, those that number is split up between two different seasons, but ultimately the Packers will have paid Rick Wagner $6.75 million for his one season in Green Bay. And the same thing goes for Christian Kirksey. He signed a two-year $13 million deal, uh, but Green Bay, after releasing him, will have paid him $6.69 million for his one year of service in Green Bay. So both of these are around $6.7 million players for their one season in Green Bay. And probably as a total, if you're looking at you know best ways to spend, what, $13 million, that's probably not the best overall way in hindsight, right? You don't take too much away from it because Green Bay was a championship contending team this past season, and Rick Wagner helped out a ton in that effort. And I think they would have really been lost in a couple different occasions had they not had that depth of Rick Wagner. But you can make an argument that, you know, in hindsight, 13 plus million for those two players was maybe a little bit of a mistake. Um, I think you can probably separate it out further than that and say, Christian Kirksey probably was absolutely a mistake, even though he played better towards the end of the season. And even though he may have needed to be that transition piece between, you know, really Blake Martinez himself and then, you know, now Chris Barnes, the likely starter moving forward. Uh, But I think you can make an argument that that maybe wasn't the best deal in hindsight. And then the other one, Rick Wagner, I think you can make a strong argument that that Brian Gutekunst would have done that over again, 100 times out of 100 if he had the opportunity. I guess in hindsight, if you have the ability to know you didn't win the Super Bowl anyway, maybe you wouldn't. But that's another story for another multiverse on another day. But I, I think they got their bang for their buck out of Rick Wagner. And what he was able to do as a starting offensive tackle for that price, I, I think it was well worth the price that they paid him this past season. And again, was almost very integral in helping Green Bay get back to a Super Bowl. So taking these two releases and just looking at, at what that does, you know, first of all, Rick Wagner had a positive grade for me, plus 0.45 in the season. Pro Football Focus liked him 
quite a bit more than than even that I did. Uh, they had them as a 78.2 grade. I was around neutral, uh, which a neutral PFF grade is about 60. So they had them at a 78.2. I had them a little bit above neutral, uh, but either way, you know, both of us graded him in the positive. He played a total of 756 snaps, starting games at tackle, and certainly playing some major snaps throughout the course of the season at that right tackle position. Christian Kirksey, on the mean hand, uh, on the other hand, excuse me. Meanwhile, uh, he graded negative 0.25 for me. Pro Football Focus was much lower on him than I, than I was. They graded him at 48.3, so I had him slightly lower than a neutral grade. Again, neutral 60. They had him at a 48.3. He played 591 snaps, and again, I think you can see the differences there. Both PFF and I positive grade for Rick Wagner, you know, starting snaps at, at tackle in a position group that really performed well in every game except the Tampa Bay game at the end of the season, unfortunately. You know, Christian Kirksey, quite the opposite, struggled in coverage, was not the same run thumper that I think Green Bay thought they were getting. Could easily see that he lost a step from his earlier years in Cleveland. I thought he played better uh, when he moved uh, to, uh, you know, that off ball linebacker position, not playing um, inside linebacker, not playing middle linebacker um, as he did earlier in the season. When they made that move, I thought he played much better. But ultimately, when you see somebody losing a step, when you need to get under the cap, and when somebody's getting up there in age, you bite the bullet, and especially when you've got two players like Chris Barnes and Kamal Martin in the lineup ready to kind of take their place. So I've already seen the tweets and the mentions and the Facebook posts of, well, now they've released you know, these two players, Rick Wagner, Christian Kirksey, now they can start going out and maybe signing players. And if you've been following me closely, you know that that is unequivocally not the case. They still have a ton of work to do, including likely a release of Preston Smith, Dean Lowry, maybe some restructures for both of those, but I still think it's more likely than not that both of those players get released. I'm somewhat intrigued as to why they didn't just release all of them together. Maybe Green Bay wants to wait and see what that salary cap is going to be at for sure before making a final decision on either Preston or Dean, but it, it still seems very unlikely to me that either are back unless they massively restructure their deals. You're still looking at a Aaron Rodgers uh, restructure and then probably a Devontae Adams extension. You could even have some uh, extensions or restructures for Zadarius Smith as well as Adrian Amos. So those are still some moves that could be made and they have a ways to go still before they can go out and sign someone. Now, having said that, they don't have to be under the cap until the league year starts in middle of March, which means they could right now, even though they're well above the salary cap, they could go out and sign a J.J. Watt right now that's available prior to the start of the year because he was released. He's not an unrestricted free agent. He was released so that he can sign at any time. Green Bay can sign him. They can sign him to a trillion dollar deal. They just would have to cut that trillion uh, before the start of the season. So they can sign him at any time and they don't have to get under the cap before signing him. So they could still go out and sign someone, but this these moves were going to happen regardless of whether they signed J.J. Watt, Aaron Jones, Corey Lindsley, everyone, no one. They needed to make those moves regardless and they still have more work to do. So this just does not free Green Bay up to go out and sign free agents like a J.J. Watt, for example. One other quick note on Christian Kirksey's release, he was released with an injury designation. Um, so that could mean that Green Bay has to pay some sort of injury settlement, which would cost more against the cap. So uh, I just mentioned 6.69 million for Christian Kirksey. That number could actually go up uh, for what they paid him if they do have to pay him out some sort of injury settlement because he was released with an injury designation. Um, this does, as I mentioned yesterday on the offensive line episode, this does leave Green Bay perilously thin along the offensive line. You have to believe that this means that uh, Billy Turner will be back. That was, as I mentioned yesterday, about 99% certain. Uh, but I, with Rick Wagner's release, I just don't think there's anything that you can do uh, to cut or release or you know do anything with Billy Turner. I think he has to be back. You've got Bakhtiari who's injured, Elton Jenkins, then Billy Turner's probably your third Lucas Patrick, John Runyon Jr., you are very thin, especially when you consider that David Bakhtiari is going to be hurt going into the season in all likelihood. So 
Green Bay has a lot of work to do along their offensive line. At the inside linebacker position, not quite as much. I think Chris Barnes is very likely that inside linebacker for the next couple of seasons that Green Bay will count on. They could certainly still add a player in the draft. Uh, they certainly could still add uh, a free agent, uh, a veteran free agent that, that maybe is a little bit cheaper than you know what a Christian Kirksey was, but maybe that brings something a little similar to the table when it comes to just a veteran presence. But uh, I think ultimately this is likely going to be a, a Ty Summers, Kamal Martin, Chris Barnes trio with maybe a couple pieces added in. Uh, I don't think they're going to certainly go gangbusters. I would be shocked if they spent a first round pick on a linebacker because that's not what they do. And I would be shocked if they spent any major money on the position either, because again, that's generally not what they do at the linebacker position. So Chris Barnes, that is your position, it would seem, for the foreseeable future. Um, but they do have a little bit of depth there, unlike the offensive line. As I mentioned, these moves were not unexpected. If you've been following along at all, the Green Bay still has a lot of work that they need to do moving forward to get under the cap, build some depth. The draft free agency are all going to be very, very interesting. So make sure to stick here with us at the Packaday Podcast, both wherever you get the audio version as well as here on the video version on YouTube. Subscribe, please, if you have not already. That's going to do it for me. Until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go!